Thank you to the Bending Saiyan for their generous donation on Patreon. If you would like to join them in their generosity, the link to my Patreon page is in the description. I inch closer and see a rectangle laying where Mark was before. It's a card. Suddenly, I feel that same warmth in my pocket again and pull out another card. The one Virgil gave me? Choose! <laughs> Save him. Well, out of all the choices we have, let's go with save him. My body's floating again. Not as aimlessly as before. It feels like I'm being guided in a specific direction this time. I glance around this new space. It's an empty gray expanse of swirling mist. The air's humid, as if it's just finished raining. Though there was no ground in the... Though there was no ground in this place, strange pillars stretched into the sky from below. As I drift past one, I see it's actually a tower of intricately stacked stones, one over the other, all the same size and shape. A Karn, what the fuck is that? What the fuck? I don't know. Why do I know that word? The speed intensifies, and I brace for impact again, expecting the same weightless feeling, and... It's cold. Ow! It's bad enough I landed on my ass, but did the ground have to be freezing? Oh, white noise. I pick myself up and see that I'm covered in snow. Not the cute powdery kind. Instead, it's like the chunky frozen kind that sticks to your clothes like icy glue. Oh, here we are. Stacy's and cash policy. Please do not... Read this text too closely. I just wanted to match the original signs without having to literally decipher what the billboard said. And it's like this information is undefined. Anyway, I hope you <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. Oh, that's fucking funny. I like that. That was nice. That's nice. So this this strikes me as Manhattan. Uh, the Big Apple. I know Manhattan, not because I've been there, but because I grew up in Kansas, and there was also a Manhattan in Kansas where uh, um, that's where uh, fucking K-State is, and they call that the, the, the Little Apple. <laughs> a loud car horn snaps me into focus, and I find myself in front of a massive department store surrounded by even bigger buildings. I dust myself off and glance at the store's, uh, the store's display window. Stores display, stores display window. The gold letters reads, the gold letter, gold, fuck me. The gold lettering reads Stacy's Herald Square. So I, this is instead of Macy's, I guess. Nice. It's hard to believe Macy's used to be big. Macy's mom has got it going on. Oh, God. I mean, they still have the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, but. No, not the Stacy's Thanksgiving. The Stacy's Thanksgiving Parade. When the fuck was the last time either of us have been in a Macy's? I don't know if I've ever been in a fucking Macy's. Anyway, hum, wait. I've heard of this place before, but it's in... Am I in New York? You got transported to fucking New York. Like, fucking New York, New York? New York, New York. December 26th. The day after fucking... Oh, excuse me. I spin around and I'm taken aback by the myriad of shining jewel-like lights that dot the skyline in front of me, stretching out into what feels like infinity. People hurry past me wearing colorful winter clothing. I feel severely underdressed. The designs of the clothing are much sleeker than what I was used to seeing in the odd st in, in the odd catalog Simone left around the house. And again, the colors. It almost looked like a doll's clothes, especially with how form-fitting everything was. I knew New York was a fashion capital, but some of these women were running around with their legs on full display. Even with stockings on, aren't they cold? The next thing to grab my attention are the gigantic buildings in the distance, stretching even higher than that skyscraper in Chicago father told me about. And the Adams and LaSalle. Uh-huh. These somber coffins of glass and cement practically reach into the clouds. 
Almost like those stone towers I saw earlier. Carns. Still don't know what the fuck that is. I wonder if the people who work in them ever feel nauseous, or if they can feel the building sway when it's windy. The idea of it makes... The idea of it makes my stomach drop, and I crouch down, feeling like I want to vomit again. Every now and then, someone would shoot me a worried glance. Some even scowled. Eventually, they all pressed on, forgetting me as soon as they saw me. It shouldn't be I shouldn't be offended. I don't know, even know these people, but it still hurts a little. Just how bad did I look? I walk back up to the display window to take a better look, but... Something's wrong. What the fuck? Why can't I see myself? Is this some kind of special glass? No, I can see everything behind me just fine. My heart starts to race. I press my nose to the glass. I look into it until my eyes practically cross. I stare a hole into where the reflection of my eyes should be. Nothing. I sink down on my knees, barely noticing the stinging snow underneath me. Under me. People behind me walk through where my head should be. I must look crazy. Am I then? I see more things that don't make sense pass by in the window's reflection. Models of car... Models of car sleeker than anything I, I, in even my father's garage. Christmas songs I've never even heard of reverberating out of open store windows. Woman in a skirt too short to even be considered a slip walking with a man who slips a dollar between her exposed cleavage? This isn't right. I, I shouldn't be here. But I really don't feel like moving anymore. I'm too scared by whatever is waiting for me in this strange place. Too many variables. The metal vent I'm kneeling on is starting to cut into my skin. The snow is starting to soak through my clothes and I notice I'm violently shivering. It's the middle of winter in New York, and I'm out here in slacks and a ruddy shirt with no shoes. I know exactly why nobody's bothering to get near me. I don't blame them. Tomorrow's obituary. Unidentified vagrant possum found frozen to death outside shopping center. Nobody from home's gonna find me this far east. What do I care? I was about to hang myself from the nearest tree, remember? This was supposed to happen one way or another. My fingers and toes are numb. I can barely move. I don't know what to do. I don't. A yellow cab screeches like a motherfucker and pulls up behind me, stopping right between where my eyes should be reflected. Wipe my nose and blink back, blink back to into consciousness. I can sort of hear a conversation back there. Driver saying something to a passenger, a laugh. Some coins are dropped and hastily picked up. And I see him step out. Mark. Mark? It's really him! Same suit, same shockingly long legs, same smile. He bumps his head, getting out of the cab and chuckles to himself before slamming the door behind him. He swings his briefcase over the shoulder and starts heading towards me, whistling Carol of the Bells to himself. I perk up, both happy to see him and also extremely confused. Is this real? What was all that bullshit before? I, I wince as my I turn my body around to watch him, that numb feeling in my fingers starting becoming a slow burn. Watching him approach, I look for any glimmer of recognition in his eyes. He walks a few feet he walks a few feet past me and heads straight for the front door. <sighs> of course exactly as I thought. I'm the one who doesn't belong here. Mark looks like he's doing fine. Why should I bother him? He slowly reaches for the brass handle. Very slowly. I notice he is looking at me, or rather stealing quick glances at me before I, he thought I'd notice. Well, I look like shit, that much is obvious. Everyone else avoided me like the plague. A minute passes, and he's still not managed to open that door. Was it heavy or something? Was the knob too cold? I shoot him a confused glance. He stares back and looks away, flustered. Does he recognize me, after all? It looks like he made up his mind this time. He swings the door open with one hand, confidently striking a pose as if he's about to stride in... 
but looks at me again with those worn, gentle eyes. His shoulders droop, and he lets the door swing closed again. Mutters something to himself, almost argumentative. I have no idea what's going on, but I blink, and he's in front of me. I reflexively flinch and fall on my back. It must be those legs. He cleared that distance in less than a second. He gently drops his briefcase to the ground next to his feet and bends down, reaching a paw out to me. Hey, uh, do you need some help, man? It's bad out here. He doesn't recognize us, but he thinks we're homeless. I could almost cry. It's still Mark. Of course he'd help me, even if we, we'd never met. He must have let my emotions show because his hand drops a bit in surprise. He chuckles and pushes his glasses back up his snoot with his other hand. Maybe something to eat? Someplace warm? I, I know a spot not far from here. I take his hand and he pulls me to my feet. I brush the snow off myself and try to come up with something not not crazy to reply with. Thanks. Um, yes, I <laughs> could really use that right now. I avoid addressing him by name, as that would definitely freak him out. We don't. We we didn't meet for long, but even during that time, he was surprisingly tight-lipped about his personal life. Guess we'll have to redo most of the formalities if this is going to be our, if this is going to feel organic. Uh, are you sure that this is okay? Uh, me going with you? I mean, I hold my jaw to stop my che teeth from shattering. He's already turned to walk away, beckoning for me to follow him. And of, of course, anybody that has a problem with it will have to will have a problem with me. He pauses before spinning around and gives me a serious look. Whatever your reasons, nobody deserves to live like that. Yep, he thinks I'm a bum. Well, I am out here doing my best bum impressions. Well, I am out here doing my best bum impressions, so I can't be too annoyed. It's not like I can explain how I really ended up here. I'll need to think of an alibi on this walk. I really don't want him to think poorly of me. He navigates the winding city streets nimbly, dodging oncoming pedestrians and hopping over potholes like some intricate dance he's perfected. Those legs. Right, an alibi. Maybe I hopped on a freight train wanting to see the world and got lost here? Or perhaps my wife kicked me out after a big fight and I'm still looking for a place to... He jumped over dog poop without even looking. Wow. Uh, so, uh, if I use that one, I'll need some names. I'm sure Christine wouldn't mind. We fought because uh, she's seeing another man. And we're here. Shit. I look up and see a little hole in the wall shop. Caravan Cafe. The sign has a motif of a little black cat in a Romani getup brewing coffee. I promise the ca I promise the coffee is better than the name. Come on. Right. Wow, very postmodern looking for the 1920s. Little bell jingles overhead as we walk in. I'm immediately hit by the smell of cigarette smoke mingling with the coffee beans. The warmth from just opening the door brings feeling back into my face and Mark tugs at my sleeve. My regular table's further in. We squeeze past the narrow tables towards the back. The place is mostly occupied by teenagers reading poetry and doing homework. I even see a few jittery college-age kids with a worrying amount of cu empty cups littering their table. We eventually arrive at a little white table in the back corner. Spindly leaves, spindly leaves hang down from rows of planters mounted on the wall, and there's a dirty mirror decorated with a colorful tile border where a window would be if this wasn't such a tiny place. Compared to the chaotic facade, this part of the store is a, compared to the compared to the chaotic facade, this part of the store is actually pretty quiet. I'm surprised none of them picked this table to study. It's nice back here. Mark's ears twitch, and he glances excitedly at me. I realize this is the most casual I've sounded so far. 
Ah, uh, well, I suspect it's because they get better service up front. One man's treasure, right? I nod and sit down. God, the movements are so well planned. Very nice. I nod and sit down, feeling the off-putting sensation of my wet ass against the rubber for the second time today. He waves to someone behind me as an older female squirrel walks up with some menus and water. Single pieces of paper encased in plastic and not a single English word on them. Before I can ask anything, she's already darted back to the counter to greet some more kids walking in. Mark chuckles and slides his menu to the side, likely having a regular order here already. He looks at me expectantly. So, uh, how... Mark. Name's Mark. I smile a little, wondering how long he'd been waiting to use that line. Line? Mark names Mark. Well, that's not a line, whatever. At least I don't have to keep pretending not to know it. Uh, uh, right. Well, Matt. What the fuck does that mean? I tell him my name in return. He nods and we shake hands, happy to have successfully completed the first hurdle of conversation. I twiddle my thumbs, trying to think of something to say. He notices my fidgeting and places a hand over mine. Hey... It's okay if you don't want to talk about yourself yet. Are you sure? Of course. Nobody chooses to reside in the streets. I'm sure it was out of your control. That's pretty presumptuous, but I know he means well. He leans back in his seat, brushing a stray palm frond... Palm frond off of his face. What the hell is a palm frond? I gotta look that up. The expert in the other room says that's a big-ass leaf. Why the fuck it was there, I don't know. And even if it was your fault, we all deserve a second chance, especially the time of year. Especially time... I imagine, I imagine that's especially this time of year. Again, it's a point one build. The build most needing of patience and understanding. I remember the music I heard earlier and assume it's still December. Christmas. It's gotta be Christmas. It's gotta be Kane! Yeah, Christmas is always my favorite time of year, too. Mark looks at me puzzled, his long ears perking up. Um, I'm afraid you're a day late for that one, Gray. I force an awkward laugh and look to the side. Well, how long was I out there? I still lost track of time. Uh -huh. Oh, look at him. Oh, look at him. He looks more annoyed than confused now. Shit. New Year's then? He sighs and adjusts his collar. Whew, you had me worried for a second. Now that's on me, though. I should have considered that you wouldn't have a way to keep dates. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. You're good. I'm honest. Oh, if I'm being honest... I'd rather talk about anything else right now, if that's all right. As if on cue, the waitress comes back to take orders. This is obviously the last stop on her route, as she hadn't checked on us in at least five minutes. Five minutes! God, what a crummy place. Make us wait five minutes. I realize I haven't even looked at the menu yet. She taps her pen on her notepad impatiently. You two need more time. Uh, sorry. I look at Mark, and he picks up on my naivete. We'll have two cappuccinos. Cappuccinos! Oh, lordy bagordy. The almost nothing of fucking espresso drinks. Well, I'll have those coming by in a few. She trots away, her fluffy tail obscuring most of her body. I sigh in relief and thank Mark for doing me a solid. I've never been to an Italian-style cafe before, are cappuccinos good? It's a little more bitter than French coffee, but you wouldn't notice unless you were an aficionado. I'm definitely no expert. <laughs> I think of all the sugary French press coffee we'd get at the bakeries back home, usually with warm beignets dripping in honey and a bag of donuts to take home. Oh, <laughs> look at that expression. Oh, I love the expression work. My stomach growls. Maybe we should get some pastries along with those drinks. <laughs> I 
I blush, though I was probably already pretty red from being nearly frozen to death. Not a bad idea. So, Mark. Hmm? Uh, tell me more about yourself. Not fair that I have all the questions be aimed at me, is it? That may have been a little bold, but I'll say anything to get the attention off me. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'm actually an archivist at a museum. Have you ever been to, to the MoMA Museum of Modern Art, I think? Maybe? Uh, mammal mammalian Anus? Um, uh, no, I'm still fairly new around here. Like ten minutes new. So you work in the arts. That's a very sophisticated field. And you definitely look the part. I gestured to his outfit and he shoots me a wink. Comes with the job. Though I guess sophisticated depends on your point of view. Art is pretty subjective. A lot of contemporary works are considered challenging by our older patrons. Personally, I want to see our galleries focus on what has the attention of the masses right now, not what wowed them over 50 years ago. So it's definitely a museum of modern art. The new generation are standing at the precipice of the next cultural zeitgeist. Frankly, things haven't been this exciting in the, world, world, in the art world for ages. His amber eyes are sparkling. I can tell this is something he's really passionate about. It's really cute, especially from such a big guy. Yes, I agree. Art is what we make uh, what <coughs> Art is what we make of it. So naturally it would change this culture evolves. Wow, we're uh, we're learning more and more about Gray every day. He is not What the fuck? I remember seeing a piece by Ducamp that I tried to wrap my head around for almost an hour. Okay. Uh didn't know that. I don't think I ever really got it, but it left an impression. He cocks his head to the side, still smiling, but with furrowed brows. Ducamp, eh? He was revolutionary for certain, but that's not exactly modern. Right now, it's all about Liechtenstein and Warhol, you know? The stuff they do downtown. It's completely outrageous that that's what's so... It's, it's completely outrageous, but that's what's so great about it. Huh? But that painting was in a recent exhibition, no? Uh, at least when I saw it in Philadelphia. That couldn't be. I would have heard about a Ducamp ex exhibit even if it were in Vienna, let alone Philly. I'm losing control of the narrative. I need to change the subject, but it's keeping him engaged. That's actually a good point, is there's no guarantee that the time period we're from is going to be the same as everyone else. Let me double check something real quick. Oh, huh. Yeah, Andy Warhol was born in 1928. This is the 60s. This is the fucking 60s. Yeah, right here it says. Here we go. Roy Fox Lichtenstein was an American pop artist during the 1960s along with Andy Warhol Jasper Johns and James Rosenquist, among others, he became a leading figure in the new art movement. Holy shit! Well, that fucking explains a number of things. <laughs> I was like, how in the hell is someone in the 1920s got a fucking Walkman? <laughs> so they, yeah, bro. So this is like that theory when Ed, Ed, and Eddie were all the kids in the cul-de-sac are really dead and from a different, uh, of different fucking, uh, uh, decade. But this is like everyone in the, in that circle is connected somehow. My current theory is that they were all either planning suicide or were about to die or something. I don't know, but, uh, but they're all from a different decade. That's cool. I like that. Huh. That is fucking cool. All right, let's continue. I need to change the subject, but it's keeping him engaged. The feeling of something being off is rearing its ugly head again. Again, as if on cue, the waitress plops down two steaming cups between us and tosses some sugar packets at me. 
shoot her an awkward thumbs up, ignoring the blatant aggression. She seems satisfied with this and walks back to her station, swatting me with her tail as she turns. Okay, no, yeah, this is definitely something. Uh, huh. Hmm. Huh. Mark grimaces at her before turning his attention to the drinks, gleefully grabbing one and lapping at the foam like a puppy who hasn't learned to take sips yet. It's all right. She can be a real card some days. I don't think it's you she's mad at. I shrug and look at the cappuccino. It's pale. Is it all foam? Not all of it. <laughs> if you don't know what to expect, this is a fuck. This is kind of fucked. I smile at Mark as I bring the cup to my lips, not wanting to appear ungrateful for the free food. I take a sip. It's bitter. Yeah, it's espresso. <laughs> quickly tear open a sugar packet and stir it in, but it's still got a vile, burnt flavor. My disgust must be apparent, because I hear Mark giggling. I sigh and give up, pushing the cup away. Hey, it's fine. If you don't like it, we can order something else. I know you don't get treated like this often, so I'd rather you get something you actually like. Thanks, really. Maybe just a muffin or something. You don't need to go out all out for me. Please, what could it have cost? A dollar? A dollar? <laughs> Mark looks surprised, and I know I've said something weird again. Maybe I don't drink the fanciest imported brands, but I've never paid more than ten cents for a cup of joe. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> there is forty years between these motherfuckers. <laughs> God, you can really tell. That makes everything make way more sense. The fucking hippy dippy wall paints and the fucking all of the the crazy stuff. This is the beginning of the fucking si what the silent generation, the lost generation, the we're gonna complain about shit forever generation. The hippies. I don't fucking know. Everything I've heard about New York is true. How do these people live? <laughs> oh man. Hey, uh, are you sure you're all right? I hastily nod, about to offer another excuse when I catch stray fragments of a conversation from the front counter. The same surly waitress is yelling into the phone while angrily flipping through some papers. Oh, she... Oh, we got very angry music. No, no, no! I said the poser should read Rain in 66 with Caravan Cafe, not Minivan Cafe! <laughs> Caravan Cafe, not Minivan Cafe. So, the. Oh, Rain in 66. So, this is 1965. Lyndon Johnson's in office. Kennedy was shot two years earlier. We. This is the year that the Voting Rights Act was signed, I believe? So, this is going into New Year's, New Year's season. December 26th, they said it was. 1965. God, there. this is not going to be an easy decade. Oh, boy. What the hell is a minivan cafe anyway? Does that make sense to you? Man, what a bitch. Wait, 66? There's no way this place has been open 66 years with service this bad. So, that must mean... Hey, am I going deaf from her screeching, or did she just say 66? <laughs> yeah, right? Hard to believe how fast this year flew by. Can't say it was a great year for me, so... Good riddance to 1965, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> the realization hitting in. The room feels like it's closing in. The room feels like it's closing in. I'm 37 years in the future. Future! <laughs> Imagine what my friends must look like now. If they're all still alive. My parents are probably dead. That quiet notion that was gnawing away at me loud... It, that quiet notion that was gnawing away at me is loud and clear now. How are people supposed to respond to this situation? Strangely, I don't feel much of anything. It's probably a normal trauma response. This is fine. I can deal with this later when whatever this is, is over. 
Gray! I snapped to attention. Oh, shit. You ain't quiet on me, buddy. What's wrong? I... Uh, um... Gray, whatever it is, you can tell me. That was horrible, but whatever. I'm just moving on. Ooh, tell him the truth or keep quiet. Oh, God. That's a fucking... Oh, uh, hey, I know you just plucked me off the street and you're hoping I'm not a psycho or whatever, but uh, I'm from the 1920s. Okay, also, let's let's pick a year specifically here. 1965 minus, they said 37 years. 1920, 1928? Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so you were in the last year of the 1920s pretending everything was fine. It was very not fine. <laughs> oh, my God. So this motherfucker went from 1928 to 1965. I can only imagine what he's going to go through when he has to go to the 90s with the fuck with Gabriel and his Walkman. Well, uh, I'm, I'm making a whole podcast about it. Fucking tell him the truth. Follow the plot. Here we go. I can't keep up this charade forever. It wouldn't be fair to him. I take a deep breath and tell him everything about Virgil and that nightmare bar, about meeting him and everyone else in that beautiful place, about magically traveling to New York by means I don't fully understand myself. I did save, didn't I? Okay, yes, I did. <laughs> Just in case this somehow goes poorly. I talk what feels like an hour not breaking eye contact, so he knows I'm being serious. He doesn't interrupt me the entire time. Occasionally he'd nod or take a sip of water. Of course, if this is 1965... You're used to people being on acid and just winding up in the streets of some random fuck city, so this might not actually be that surprising to him. <laughs> I can't read his face. Finally, I finish and lean back in my seat. There's nothing else I can do now. Mark gulps down the rest of his coffee before speaking up. That's certainly a lot to go through in one night. Really? That's okay. You must be so tired. So, you believe me then? He leans forward, looking at me intently. It's not so much that I believe everything you told me, but your feelings are real, and that's important. And if what you said is true, you've had one hell of a day. I'm stunned. At best, I expected him to write me off as another lunatic roaming the streets, chalked us up to a failed experiment in charity, and bid me farewell. But he's taking this way better than expected. I feel a little less crazy. I mean, this is real, right? We're sitting here, talking, and eating. There's an explanation for this out there somewhere, and I'll find it. Mark takes my silent as a, silence as a cue to stand up and pat me on the head before turning to head out of the shop. <laughs> I don't know what the last bit of that sentence is on the cash policy sign. I hope I I think it's enjoy this whatever, but <laughs> that is so funny that little sign. We walk back out and I wince at the cold air hitting my snoot. It's only six, but the sun's completely set. Welcome to the north. I see it stopped snowing and sigh with relief. Mark chuckles and walks to the curb, sticking out a thumb. No worry. I wouldn't plan on unleaving you out here again. Huh? He successfully waves down a taxi and gestures for me to come over. You can stay with me for a couple days. I have tomorrow off already. Maybe I can give you a little tour of the city. This is an incredible generosity. I can't help but feel that there might be a, another a, a, a shoe to drop here. But he seems to be a genuinely nice guy, and he seemed that way in the thing, so maybe this is just a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. This day keeps getting more and more surreal. Regardless of how sketchy this would be in normal circumstances, I'm not above staying at a stranger's house. Especially if the alternative is staying out here. That sounds fun. I'd be delighted. I'm not even lying. Apart from all the weird shit going on, spending a day sightseeing with Mark sounds incredible. I duck into the cab and he follows suit. 
He has to slouch so his head isn't poking into the roof, but he's probably used to it at this point. The cabbie is merciful and spares us the chit-chat, Mark only having to give him an occasional comment about directions. We ride silently for a while, the, frozen, the fallen snow muting the cacophony of the city around us. For the first time when it feels like ages, I feel like things are finally calm. Something bad's gonna happen. Uh-oh. feel Mark gently place a hand on my thigh. I shoot him a smile, reciprocating by linking arms and placing my head over his. My hand over his. Okay. Interesting. I mean... Okay, well, let's continue. Everything is so cozy. 